The next speaker for the evening is not only an architect, but also an architecture and graphics writer. An alumni of the esteemed University of Notre Dame, he has contributed several books and more in architecture that has helped students of architecture and architects all around the world. He received the special jury commendation in the 2007 Cooper Hewitt National Design Awards and an AIA 2007 Institute Honor Award for collab Collaborative Achievement. Let's welcome Frank Chang. All right, all right. Uh, okay. We're, we're, we're running a little bit behind schedule. So I, I, I first want to uh, thank uh, the school here for, uh, and Sahir for uh, inviting me uh, to this conference uh, and enabled me to, to, to visit India for the second time. Um, I, I must say that I, I was very impressed by Palinda's work. Uh, and to see actual projects in color is, is pretty impressive. And it, and it brings to mind something I, w I should point out that I wasn't planning on saying, but I should tell you this, that our goal here, of course, is the built architecture, the built environment. That, that's our goal. What I'm going to talk about is really a means to that end, not the end in itself. It is only the means to an end. And what I want to share with you today is my personal way of looking at drawing. I have had a very varied career. I, I served in the military. I worked in an office. I've been licensed. I've, I've done projects by hand. I, I've taught. I've published books. Now I'm even giving a lecture. But what's central to all of that, what I've done over the years, has been drawing. That, that is my identity, is the drawing. So, it's weird. Um, okay, so, I want to start out with the idea of drawing. And this is a quote from Orhan Pamuk's book, My Name is Red. And it's actually a book about, uh, during the Ottoman Empire, how miniaturists were hired to illustrate books. And I, he was actually talking about painting, and I've inserted the word drawing, because to me, this is a key to the idea of drawing. It is a silence of thought. So when I'm drawing a scene before me, I am silent and I'm thinking. I'm not doing other things. I'm focused on what I see and how I'm representing it. But the result is the music of sight, because the, the resultant lines and the pace of the lines, you can see in the background those images, those lines speak to the eye. It is the music of sight. Okay, so let me, let, let me begin. There are three faculties. Remember the title, Seeing, Thinking, Drawing. I want to start off with drawing because I'm going to sort of go through my career chronologically. I started drawing to simply to communicate ideas and information in my books. So I used a lot of diagrams, and you can sort of see uh, some of the drawings that I've used. The second part is thinking. And uh, you saw in some of Polinda's work, some of his sketches in section and, and plan, uh, you use these kinds of drawings to express your thinking in design. And finally, the seeing process, the observation process, and what I do mostly now is drawing on location. So drawing, thinking, and seeing. So this is a very quick sketch that I did 
riding around a square, and uh, it took me probably be 30 seconds. But the key to this drawing is my ability to see and remember. These drawings represent not just what I've seen, but my interpretation of what I've seen. So in visiting this ancestral hall in China, I was trying to represent and plan, and three-dimensionally, the form of the, the spaces, the form of the roof, and the courtyard is being um, defined by that. So even if you're drawing on location, you can be thinking about these views. And then drawing is the result. This was actually done on a napkin. It's still a, a, a elongated. OK, so, so there's, a, there's a process here that occurs. It can occur instantaneously. It can occur over a period of time. So if we start with seeing, on lo drawing on location, our eyes take in information. We don't see only with our eyes. If two of us are standing next to each other looking in the same scene, we don't necessarily see the same thing or see the same thing in the same way. Our seeing, the visual information we take in, has to be interpreted by our mind. That's all part of the visual system. And then the drawing is to simply make what we see and observe and think about visible. Okay? So drawing on location, the, the, this, this process is we see, we interpret, we draw. We see, we interpret, we draw over and over again. In design, we start here with the thinking. We, we have ideas in the head. We can evaluate, we analyze, we contemplate. So the process begins with the thoughts in our head. We draw them or model them to make them visible so we can act on them. And that's where the, the seeing part comes in. We make them visible. We can see them. Others can see them. And so that's where the communication comes in. So the process can start here with the thinking and design. When the process starts with drawing, we're in another mode of communication. We're using drawings to convey thoughts and ideas to others. Okay? So we draw. Other people see what you've drawn. They interpret your drawings in a certain way. Okay? So because we're dealing with architecture, urban design, the built environment, this is the issue for us, and for me especially, is that it's not, we think of drawing as a manual skill, the hand and the eye. But it involves seeing and thinking, most critically, how do we convey three-dimensional information on a two-dimensional surface? So when we're drawing on paper, we're drawing on two-dimensional surface. Even if we model it on the computer, the monitor itself is, is two-dimensional. So the three dimensions we see is pure illusion. They're all just visual illusions. So even as we rotate the model on the computer, it's illusionary. Okay. So this is the, the problem we face. Whether we draw by hand or on the computer, how do we adequately convey three-dimensional information on a two-dimensional surface? And of course, we then have drawing as a language. Of course, in the old days, when I was going to school, it was sort of plan, section, elevations, and then finally the perspective view. Today, with the computer, we tend to start with the perceptual views, perspective views, and then we may end up cutting sections and plans. So it's the reverse. But it's nevertheless, it's conveying three-dimensional information on a two-dimensional surface. I started drawing to simply to communicate ideas and information. So you can see the drawings on the left are done by hand, pencil, on paper. 
And on the right, I'm using the same ideas, diagrammatic ideas, but now I'm using a computer. But the same uh, intentions occur. So in this case, I draw, you see, and you interpret. So that's the mode of communication. The advantage of a computer, I've found, is the ability, the, the greatest thing for me in publishing these texts is the undo, duplicate, and move, save as. Those are the issues that are really advantageous for me. But I treat the digital world the same way I treat the manual world. I still do the same, uh, I approach the information the same way. Again, you can see the hand drawings on the left, the more uh, complex drawings on the, on the right. But again, can simply conveying information. So we, if we start with thinking, drawing from the mind's eye, we're dealing with conceptual views. This is a page of a sketchbook as students are presenting their ideas in a studio, I am simply diagramming their ideas. I'm interpreting what they're saying. I'm drawing my interpretation of their ideas in a very small format. So I'm hearing what people are saying, I'm thinking about what they're saying, and I'm trying to make them visible. So the next time I see the student, I know where they're coming from. So instead of just listening to what somebody's saying, actually drawing the idea out actually makes you understand it better. So in this case, the thought comes in, you hear something, the ideas are in your head, you draw them to make them visible, right? So you can see and act on it. Even if you're drawing on location, you can still draw from the mind's eye. So if you look at the perspective view or perspective sketch of the Castel San Angelo on the left, that's a fairly typical view, the approach across the bridge and so on. And what you see on the right-hand side is my attempt at trying to understand the path that one takes as you enter and move through the complex. It doesn't replicate it exactly, but the process of thinking it out on paper helps you understand where and how you're moving through the, through the building. So this is really simply a means to an end of understanding what you're seeing and what you're visiting. And of course, this is, I haven't practiced in about 50 years, but this is a recent project that I've been working on and so th these are similar to Belinda's work. These are some of my own drawings studying different aspects of, of the project. It's small scale. So uh, fairly typical, even though you will have to admit that in terms of design, development, design documentation, and so on, the, the computer is indispensable, completely indispensable. It's early on in the design process where this kind of drawing can still occur. So this is what I focus on now, which is simply drawing on location. So you see, you take an information, you interpret it, and you draw it out. And the reasons, the first thing is drawing to notice. So instead of taking a photograph, if you stop in a place and you attempt to draw it, you, the time you spend drawing it should make you aware of things that you normally wouldn't be aware of. So the purpose of drawing is to, draw, is to notice things. Secondly, drawing to understand. I've already showed you the example of Castel San Angelo. This is uh, St. Evo where instead of the, in, in addition to the perspective view, I'm looking at the plan geometry, and I'm, I'm looking at its position at the end of a courtyard, which you normally don't think about or see, is that it's actually at the end of a courtyard, uh, courtyard space. 
And then, of course, drawing to remember. And here, what I'm simply going to do is document. Now, I, I, I'm going to tell you my age by telling you that I went to school in the 60s. All right, I went to school in the 60s. And I didn't really start drawing this way until 1990 when they had the opportunity to spend a month in, in Japan. And what I did was I, I gave myself the task of doing one drawing each day, minimum. OK, so this is one of them. Drawing on location is, first of all, personal. Because just the way you write differently, the, what you observe and how you represent it is a very individual uh, attribute of your drawings. It's not like the computer where I, it's difficult for my eyes to understand the authorship of a computer drawing. The more sophisticated people might be able to do it, but my eyes are not trained to do that. But in, when you're drawing on location, there is an authorship that is recognizable. Okay, and so that's one of the advantages, I think. It's extemporaneous in a sense. You can't go home and prepare for it the night before, like saying, oh, this is what I'm going to do. Because you, when you confront the information in front of you and you interpret it, that's, what's, that's what you're going to end up drawing. So in a sense, it's, you can't prepare for it. It has to happen on the spot. And I'm talking about not taking a photo and then drawing from the photograph in your studio. And as I started in the beginning, it is meditative. So I did this drawing on the left, 1990. And then later, I was looking at Hiroshige's block prints. I discovered this view of the same temple, slightly different point of view. And I always find it interesting that uh, what is how many years apart, 150 years apart, these two views of the temple occurred. Now, also, if you watch the, the timing, this is China, 1993. The, the way of drawing, which is what now, seven, 25 years ago, I had much better eyesight and much better control of the hand. So you can see the style of drawing is very much different than how I draw today. So the drawing on the left is a drawing that I did as a student of the Spanish Steps. The drawing on the right is what I did in 2000, and I simply merged it. If this view is similar, the approach is similar, but the tool was different. This is simply to point out that when you travel, you simply don't have to just draw the, the, what I would call the postcard views, the perspective views. but you can do diagrams, you can annotate, you can paste things into the book. So it's not simply a drawing journal. It's really a journal that has drawings in it, but it also may have writing and other items in it. This is the Campo de Fiori. My apartment was just beyond the statue of Bruno overlooking the Campo. One attribute when I'm drawing is I'm always trying to establish where I was, not just what I was looking at. So the relationship between the viewer and the, what's viewed is established. So in this case, having this edge of the wall overlooking the Tiber is important, not just the Tiber Island itself. The typical view here, of course, is as you approach the Kapodogi, you, you go up the series of steps, and you look at the, the statue, and then you see the buildings on both sides. I went off to the side and looked this way so I could see the church and uh, uh, the uh, monument beyond. So I have three layers of history there, not just the view of the space. This is. This shows you the, the value of white space. The, the value of white space. So the focus is on the rooftops that you see, not 
what they sit on. So the white space is really important here. I often draw maps. I draw views of the ferry. And then arriving in Como, I drew the, the, the cathedral. And I just, the three drawings sort of merge into each other. Now, this is a, a drawing of Via Giulia. And it looks fairly detailed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow a portion of it up. What you end up seeing is that the drawing looks detailed, but if you were to look very carefully, I am not replicating exactly what I see. I'm not drawing every molding. I'm not drawing every capital. What I'm doing is, with the strokes, suggesting so that when you look at it, you know what I drew because it suggests to you what the identity is. That is, to me, the magic of drawing, hand drawing, freehand drawing, is that ability to suggest without replicating. In some ways, it's efficient. It is a, a, uh, an exercise in abstraction. Closer to home, where I live. So this is another example of pinning point, pinpointing where I was standing, not just what I was looking at. So the street signs, I always try to put in street signs, fire hydrants, things of that nature to contribute to the scene. The other thing you'll notice as you go back into the view, notice I haven't really drawn a whole lot. I'm just letting it fade away. You'll also notice now, if you contrast the drawings from the 90s, these drawings are getting a little bit uh, looser. And these, these are not drawings of monuments that we tend to draw. We stop at the Castel San Angelo, we stop at San Evo, you know, we stop at the Pantheon. But these drawings are closer to home, and what it does is it, it makes you aware of where you live. There's a hamburger joint and, uh, that everyone frequents. Uh, so what I did there was I wrote a short history and included it in the drawing. Of course, you recognize OMA's work, the Seattle Library. Now, if you look carefully, I'm drawing in ink. Do you see the stray lines? At first, when I started this drawing, I had the building much lower. And I had the drawing much narrower. And as I developed the drawing, I realized that the proportions were off. So instead of trying to erase them, I just simply continued the drawing, which is perfectly fine. So even though there's some stray marks there, the idea still comes across, which means that the drawing, in a way, is, is a search. And you have to pay attention to what you see more than the drawing. So if you see a proportional error or, or the building is squat, wider, taller, the important thing is that you've seen that. And if you've, wrote, you've drawn it incorrectly, then you just fix it. Because the important thing is that you've learned by doing the drawing. The drawing is not the end. It is a means to understanding. Okay. Uh, drawing workshops, like what I did this morning, is it's just giving me the opportunity to visit places uh, starting in Taipei. You can see the uh, Taipei 101 tower in the background. Of course, the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. Now, the, the screen is stretched, so uh, these drawings are not replicating the proportions correctly. 
This is in Lisbon. Now, this is an interesting view because I didn't want to, to stand in the square and look at the square. I wanted to stay in the arcade to communicate that there's an arcade that wraps the square where I was. And so when I did that, I had to position the entrance gate in one of the openings. So it required me to move around a little bit to find the ideal spot where I could see not only the statue in the middle, but that gateway is framed beyond. Okay. Also, the binding of the book, I had to miss that. This is a very quick sketch, uh, layered in space. You can see how, uh, in a sense, it's messy here. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not as precise as when I was younger. But the feel of the place is still there. The reason this is all that white space on the bottom, because there was a huge uh, truck in front of it that it didn't want to draw. Public spaces where people, the activity of the space is, is really important. Mexico. So there, I, I, to supplement the drawing, I drew a detail of a statue this way in the corner. And then uh, the, I glued in the uh, admission ticket to the museum. Now. I did this drawing with an Apple Pencil and an iPad. And what, the reason I did this is that I want to show the process. And what, what I start with is sort of, a, sort of a wireframe view, blocking out the major parts without detail. Notice the left-hand corner is for sure, and so I moved it slightly. And at a certain point, then I begin to add the detail and the values. And I tend to work outside in, from the edges in. Some people work inside out. I tend to define the context and then the details within it. Now, if I were to critique this drawing myself, which I will, I overdid it. I didn't know when to stop, all right? I, I, I should have stopped way back uh, when. I, I, just, I just went, I went too far. And there's sometimes that happens. Uh, there, here's another video of an interior. Again, I started with the cross section the bays, projection, the bays, crossing. And I basically start off with the broad strokes before I decide to move in and do values. Notice how I moved that lantern on the left, that lamp, to the, to the further left because the original position was wrong. And so I just ignored that. Okay, so I'm going to conclude. I'm going to end right here. And up to this point, all the, the latter slides have been drawing on location from direct observation. And the other side of the same coin is drawing from the imagination and design. In the design studio, you're drawing from the imagination out in the street, you're drawing from observation. But there are two sides of the same coin. 
And I think they supplement each other, or they can supplement each other. So while I'm focused on one, uh, which is seeing the present, the drawings that you use when you think about the future can also be done by hand, but the nature and the reason for doing it may be completely different. But I think one can supplement and complement the other. And so that's what I want to leave with you is that, that drawing on location is, to my mind, something that still uh, I would encourage, especially students as they travel, is to document their travels with drawings, diagrams, and so on, simply to, to uh, get you to think more about what you're experiencing and what you're seeing. Not simply taking photographs, and photographs are fine, but, but if you have the time, draw what you're, what you're experiencing as much as possible. Say, so, I want to say thank you, uh, and sorry, certainly, um, it, be happy to, to get any questions, okay? Uh, uh, thank you for enlightening us. Um, I have a question to ask. Uh, my question is, what do you think are the pitfalls or the demerits of um, thinking uh, versus seeing and which one do you prefer? So, uh, um, okay. drawing from thought as compared to drawing on location. But as I ended by saying that they complement each other. But um, of course they do. I don't disagree with that. But then what do you think are certain um, contrasting features of these two processes? Well, okay, first I should go back. You know, the, if, if what we see, we receive, our eyes receive in light, mm -hmm. color, patterns, light and dark, so on. And our mind is interpreting that information. So there's thinking involved in drawing on location. Yeah. Okay, so I don't want to separate seeing and thinking. It, they, they go together, all right? Seeing is simply taking in information, but our mind has to interpret it. There's a saying that the eye is blind to what the mind does not see. Mm, okay. okay, now as far as both, if when I, when I developed a drawing course, I devoted the first half to drawing from observation, yes. the real environment, and, rep and how you can represent that environment using different, the different elements of the language. You know, of course, orthographic projection, there's uh, paraline views, there are perspective views. They all represent the same place. And the drawings are just different ways of viewing that. Again, the drawings are just a means to an end. A digital model is another way. A physical model is another way. But we're all are trying to represent either a place that exists or a place that you're thinking about building. All right, yeah. Okay? So that what you are trying to say is as seeing can be part of the thinking, rather the thinking can be part of the seeing when we take in information and then we put it on paper on location. I'm guessing thinking is part of seeing as well. Absolutely. And in design, the thought comes to your head, but unless you can put it on paper hmm. or build a model on the computer, you cannot act on it. Yeah. And others cannot see what you're thinking. And that's where the language comes in. There's I would call conceptual views, which is the traditional plan, section, elevation, which we don't see the world that way. It's a, it's a conceptual map. And then there are the perspective views, which are more perceptual in nature. Mm -hmm. They can distort, they can lie, and, and, and so on and so forth. In a strange way, a perspective view is dynamic, right? It has mm -hmm. all these converging lines, but it's extremely static. How, how would you propose you know, that? You understand, a, pers a perspective is extremely static. Now, if I look at a plan and section, in my mind, I can walk through those spaces. Mm, all right. You see what I'm saying? In a plan, I can walk through those spaces. But a perspective, I just yeah, see it one view. Your yeah, it constricts your vision. Yeah, it, it, so right. it's, kind of, it's kind of a strange thing. So the perceptual view is very fixed. And, and so... Uh, 
I, I don't want to discount any of the views, perspectives versus orthographic projection, but I think you need to use both. Mm, all right. Right? Yeah. Thank okay. you very much, sir.